Yeah, I own um, about 100 acres, seven miles east of Bayfield, up against the HD Mountains. There's a, it's a, it's a long-term relationship. <laughs> um, so we've been dealing with the oil companies. We haven't had a new well put on our land in probably uh, 10 years, 10 or 15 years. I work for the San Juan Citizens Alliance, and I am what they refer to as the energy issues organizer for the alliance. It's a community organization. Uh, we deal with uh, social and environmental justice issues. So what I do specifically is deal a lot with oil and gas issues and power plant issues, uh, air quality, um, and uh, as, as it applies to uh, oil and gas operations and power plants, and deal with uh, surface rights issues that uh, people have because of what they call the split estate in oil and gas development. Uh, two one on one uh, piece of property, one ranch and one on the other, but then there's uh, two others that drain the mil they're not on our land, but they drain the minerals from our land. Yeah, so basically, I mean, it's really complicated, but uh, in order to access the gas, the oil companies are basically pumping water. And they're, they're sort of a misconception. People think that the pump jacks that you see are pumping oil, but they're not. They're pumping out water, which then releases pressure so that the gas can come up. Um, and they have basically been doing that since they started drilling coal bed methane in 1986 without any... Um, any rights to the water. Basically, in, in the state of Colorado, uh, we, we're a split mineral estate, so the whoever owns the minerals does not necessarily own the surface, but that's not true of the water. If you own a piece of property, then you own the water that's under it. so many. Um, I, I guess, I mean, one of the things is, is that this was a, when, when they came in 1986, when they started drilling, and, and basically conventional natural gas peaked in 86, and that's when they turned to, this is called non-conventional uh, coal bed methane, and actually this is now peaking also. Um, but this was a, this was a farming and ranching area. Um, and, and then, you know, in the 90s is when it started to get more sort of developed. Um, and it, it completely changed the character of this area. So it went from being a sort of rural area to being an industrial area. Um, and, and then many people, and, and a lot of the ranchers um, sold or leased their minerals thinking they'd maybe get rich and they were really poor and all of that. And so they've, they've lost pastures, they've had cows die, they've lost wells, they've had wells polluted. And then, and then people moved in who who thought they were moving to the country, you know, um, and then got an oil and gas well next to them, so little ranchettes, and they've had, you know, problems with asthma, problems with noise, problems with uh, again uh, contaminated wells. Um, yeah, it's just it's been it's completely changed the character of this area and and the environmental consequences are enormous and and sort of unseen so it's also we're sort of living in a very polluted area without knowing it something else. They're here 
uh, you know, this isn't news. They're here to make money. More power to them. You know, they will say, we add jobs, we add tax revenues, we uh, are here, you know, for these things, and we bring these things to the community. They are not here to pay taxes. They are not here to create jobs. They are here to make money. It is their bottom line that they look at. When will people choose to protect our landscape instead of going for our resource. Um, and, and at some point we're, we're going to, and especially I think as, as um, climate change starts to affect us more and we're going to be more, and, and our oil resources run out, we're going to be more dependent on the places that we live um, and we're going to have to choose to protect them, and especially water, um, over getting out uh, a cheap industry. Thank you.